Let's start with a hot topic, competency-based graduate medical education. During this lecture, we will outline how competency-based medical education addresses the gap in traditional medical education and define competency-based medical education at its common terms and describe the principles and the process of competency-based medical education. Before I will start, I'd like to ask you an important question. Are medical schools graduating physicians who are competent to serve health needs of the society? Or in other words, when do medical students or residents worth to be doctors? And the answer is, after completion a certain number of rotation of a faculty direction and survives a prescribed years of training, passing through lots of good assessment with absence of bad assessment and finally passing the exam to get the certification, he will be a real doctor. What was the actual situation we were facing before? For many years, the traditional curriculum and the training program have been designed around the educational and learning objectives, depending on the knowledge base, procedural skills and behavior, and the assessment in these situations was to measure attainment of knowledge and the specific skills and not the ability of delivering thoughtful and contextual health care in an authentic setting. Therefore, there was an increase in the gap between the health professionals' education, health care delivered, and the social health needs. So, there is an intimate need to define the expected role of the physician and to clearly state the characteristics and the ability of the doctors graduating from medical schools. So, redesigning the curricula toward achieving outcome requirement and making competences is, was a chief driving force of medical training and the curricular planning directed by appropriate assessment methods. So, competency-based medical education is a fast emerging as a core strategy to impart medical education worldwide. It focuses on the outcome in a time-independent manner, shifting our thinking and changing the question we were asking before many times, did our trainee complete the curriculum into what can our trainee actually do? Competency-based medical education is an approach to ensure that the graduate develop the competencies required to fulfill the patient needs in the society. Competency is the ability of a health professional which can be observant. Shifting the traditional from the traditional concept about knowledge, skills, and attitude into a competence. Competency-based medical education emphasizes time-based training and thus bridging the gap between theory and practice. It offers accountability and the flexibility, and the learning outcomes are more important than learning pathways or the process, as Customers care only about the performance of the car. They never care about the way it was manufactured. It is context-dependent and only physician meeting the standard are graduated. In 2001, the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education, or ACGMA, initiated the outcome project for emphasizing educational outcome in terms of competences to be achieved during the course of and assign six domains of educational and clinical knowledge, skills, attitudes that physicians must develop for independent and autonomous practice of a specialty or subspeciality. These domains are patient care, medical knowledge, professionalism, system-based practice, practice-based learning and improvement, and interpersonal and communication skills. What is competency? It's a specific knowledge, skills, attitude within the core competency domain for a particular specialty. For example, an internal medicine residency program. If the core competency or the domain was patient care, the competency would involve taking a history, performing physical examination, clinical reasoning, invasive procedure, diagnostic test, 
Petition Management and Consultative Care. And in merit the can knowledge care competency, the competency could be core content and diagnostic tests. What about milestones? Milestones is a description of performance level residents and defaults are expected to demonstrate for skills, knowledge and behavior in the six core competency domain or a specific point in development of an individual's ability along a developmental continuum that express the stepwise progression of expertise. For example, in a donor medicine residency program, if the core competency or domain was patient care and the competency is to take a history, it will be the milestones will be divided into four levels. After six months of the start of the program, the resident will be able to acquire accurate and relevant history from the patient in an efficiently customized, prioritized, and hypothesis-driven fashion. Later on, in the ninth month, he will seek and obtain appropriate verified and prioritized data from secondary sources like family, record, or pharmacy. And the 18th month, he will obtain relevant historical subtleties that inform and prioritize both differential diagnosis and diagnostic plan, including sensitive, complicated, and detailed information that may not often be volunteered by the patient. And at the end of the program, he will be the role model, gathering subtle and reliable information from the patient for junior members of the healthcare team. Another example in the superstitiality of cardiovascular disease. If the core competency was patient care and the sub-competency is invasive cardiovascular testing, the first milestone will be to discuss the key steps and anatomy relevant to the procedure. At the second level, you will recognize normal coronary anatomy and the standard angiographic views. At the third, you will interpret angiographic hemodynamic data with supervision. And the fourth level who will independently interpret angiographic and hemodynamic data and integrate with other clinical findings for common clinical conditions. But at the fifth level, who will be independently interpret angiographic and hemodynamic data and integrate with other clinical findings for complex clinical conditions. Therefore, in any curriculum based on a competency-based education, I will find the core competency or the competency domains, which provide a contextual framework describing the required domains for a trusted physician to enter autonomous practice. And these competencies or each core competency is further divided into smaller sets of competencies or sub-competencies that allow for further specification of key ability area. And these competencies will be subdivided into milestones, which are the developmental trajectories for each speciality. What about the trustable professional activity? It's a unit of professional practice that may be entrusted to a learner to execute and supervised once he or she has demonstrated the required competency. It's APA or interest for professional activity. It links competency to the clinical context. It reflects a collection of different competencies as applied to the work of the discipline, like conduct significant conversation with patients and other providers. APA is interestful act that require trust by colleague, patient or society, professional, confined to occupation with extraordinary qualification and right activities. It's a task that may, must be done. A by example, much care of patient with acute complex disease across multiple care setting, maybe demonstrate personal habits of lifelong learning, or maybe provide care for the complicated newborn infant or child in invasive care setting. What's the difference between competency and APA? Competency is a person descriptors, while well, APA is a task descriptors. Competency include knowledge, skills, attitudes, values. APA 
most essential task in professional practice. Competencies like communication ability, management ability, professional attitude, scholarly skills, but APA is to counsel patient, lead family meeting, and search central line or resuscitate patient. APA is a task to be done, but it needs a person with a competency to perform this task. For example, I want the resident to private patient care consultation with each, which is my APA, and the ACGME core competencies, the list of core competencies are listed, and each competency or core competencies of them is divided into subsequent relative sub competencies or milestones. For example, if the core competency is patient care, the resident should be able to effectively report consultation and effective and the timely reports. While in the core competency of medical knowledge, he should have the diagnostic knowledge and interpret, synthesize, and summarize knowledge, teach others, and so on. In other words, if my resident was able to perform all these sub-competencies or milestones, he will eventually and trustfully provide the patient care consultation in a professional manner. In order to design a competency-based system of education, the following steps should be approached. The first should identify the desired outcome and define the level of performance of each competency. Then select the educational activities, experiences, and the instructional method and develop a framework for assessing competencies, then evaluate the program on a continuous pace to be sure that all the desired outcomes are being achieved. Finally, I hope that I could spot a lot on the most important point in the definitions and the principles of competence-based medical education. I wish you all the best of luck, with all my respect. Thank you.